Okay, let's talk about inverter duty. That's a popular requirement in the severe duty world these days. What does that really mean for a motor? Our motor, we talk about all our W22 motors are inverter duty. What does that mean? It means that the insulation system has been designed to withstand the ravages of the VFD waveform. There's a lot of voltage spikes, uh, there's a lot of harmonics, and so the motor has to be able to withstand that and not damage the insulation system. So we utilize an insulation system that is suitable to, to meet the values of MG1 part 31 required. There's more to it than just that. So yeah, our insulation system's good, and we've, we're protected from the waveform that way. What about the heat? You know, that it generates additional heat in the motor, but now on VFDs, you're going to slow the motor down. Two kinds of applications. One, you slow it down and the torque stays the same. That's a constant torque application. The heat generated in the motor is about the same through that entire range, except you're slowing down the fan, so the fan can't cool the motor as efficiently anymore. So the motor is going to get hotter. That's why when you see a rating for VFD service, it typically has a range. In our case, 20 to 1 constant torque on most ratings. That means that we can go down to 1 20th of full speed and still meet, stay within the insulation's uh, temperature rise. If you have a constant or a variable torque type load, which is like a lot of centrifugal pumps or fans or something, the, the load is dropping off faster than the, the uh, cooling capability of the motor. So in fact, there is no real limitation when you go down in speed on a, on a centrifugal type application. So that's the temperature and the insulation. There's one more piece that a lot of people get, get into that can cause problems, and that's bearing currents. We talk about uh, uh, shaft currents, bearing currents, um, stray currents. There's lots of terms used. What does that really mean? Well, a VFD and a motor are part of a system. That system has to also include the cable that connects the two and the grounding and the bonding of the, the motor back to the drive. So it's actually a complex system. The bearing currents are not a motor problem. It, they just fail the motor, so we get the blame for it. But they're really a systems issue. And so we have ways we can protect for it if somebody feels that they're going to have that issue or if they know they're having that issue. Things like insulated bearings, shaft grounding, those are ways to protect the motor from bearing currents. But the bearing currents are actually created by the common mode voltage, which is a drive-related uh, voltage waveform. And, and there's a whole seminar we could do on just bearing currents and, and protection. But suffice to say that if you need additional protection for bearing currents, we have the ability to do it as an option. But as standard, the motors uh, would not be protected from a bearing current.